Great. Good to see you. You know, um, I'm not going to start with any bullshit uh, Vegas, last night in Vegas jokes. So um, let's get this thing going quickly. I, I, I'm, hey, <laughs> how are you doing, man? I'm Devda Tilurkar. Um, I was lucky to be, like you guys, uh, in a few startups. Um, I did three uh, semi, some very successful startups. I was in a company called uh, KBX that was, became a unicorn. Uh, then I was early at a company called Infosys that today is a $40 billion market cap company, very large services business. Um, then I did my own company called Yantra, which was a fairly successful, not, not entirely a unicorn, but very successful. And you know, building companies is very messy, very accident prone, you always make mistakes, but it's always exhilarating and I loved it. And I always thought I was going to be a serial entrepreneur and I was to do one company at a time. And in 2005, I decided to, when I sold my business and I was wondering what to do next, I took a right turn and became a VC. And um, it was, you know, it was primarily because uh, of the partnership. CRB, the partner, uh, that, that logo that you see out there, is a early, one of the finest early stage startup company, uh, startup VCs. We've been around for the past 40 years. We invest in early stage consumer and uh, enterprise companies. And over the last 40 years, I've seen a variety of tectonic shifts in our industry. And um, you know, one of the reasons I decided to become a VC was I saw this big shift coming to the cloud and big data and mobile and all these things. And I decided that rather than becoming an entrepreneur again, try my hand on the other side. Um, How many of you guys have seen this slide? You know, this is, um, if not on, uh, on the web, you must have definitely seen it on your Twitter feed. You know, this is a slide that The Economist put together in an, uh, talking about how the technology landscape has changed over the past, since the 80s. You know, as you can see there, IBM was one of the largest, you know, players in the space in the 80s when they came up with the mainframe. And over time, every time there was a technology shift, you can see a new giant being born. And this is not the size of the market, this is a percentage of the market value. Uh, you know, just to give you a size of, a indication of how big these companies get over, over a period of time. And you know, the interesting thing is that this market now is over, a f over 500 to 600 billion dollars and still growing very, very, very fast. And as you can see, you know, IBM, gave up control to Microsoft, Microsoft is now giving up control to Apple, and you know, that shift continues. Every time there's a paradigm shift, new companies are born in this space. And um, this, you know, the, the interesting part about this chart is that old companies don't die. You know, IBM still sells mainframes, believe it or not. You know, it still makes a lot of money selling mainframes. And, and these guys, you know, the, 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 the new guys that come up, you know, take up this massive, they take up leadership roles in this massive and emerging market. You know, that's, that's the reason why entrepreneurs, uh, how many of you are entrepreneurs here? Abysmal. I thought most of you guys would be entrepreneurs. You know, this is the reason why entrepreneurs thrive on technology. Because this is what they want to do. They want to become the next Apple, the next Google, the next Microsoft. And that's the reason why people like me exist. You know, we want to find those guys. So, so, you know, just, just a history lesson for, for people under 40 or under 30. You know, the, these are very, very large markets, and these markets continue to kind of evolve over time. You know, in the 70s, it was controlled by IBM. 80s, what ha and you know, in those days, IBM used to deliver everything. They, they gave developers developer tools, they gave them databases, they gave them storage, they gave them compute. They even gave them cables and air conditioning. I mean, these are, these are very, very expensive pieces of technology that could be afforded by only the largest of enterprises. In the 80s, we call that the mini computer era. And when that shift happened, the mini computers provided the same technology that IBM was providing, similar kind of capabilities, but on a, on a smaller scale. That's why they're called mini computers. 
And what, what that did was they reduced the cost of computing, and that cost basically was, that advantage was transferred to the, to the enterprise. The next thing that happened in the 90s was the PC was invented, and a brand new set of companies were born. In 2000, the browser was invested, and the PC got disrupted. And you know, this is what's going on. Every 10 years, there's a big shift happening. And we are right in the middle of a huge $500 billion market getting completely dislocated because of mobile and cloud. This is the, you know, in, in the next 10 years, the set of companies that, that, that get born there are not even, on this, uh, not even on this chart. The first movers in this space are um, companies like Amazon, Google, Microsoft. You know, a lot of the, the entire development, um, you know, the big move began with, how many of you know about SaaS? Yeah, some of you. So, software as a service with Salesforce.com and a few of these guys were the first companies who tried to adopt the cloud. You know, started moving to the cloud. And the reason why they went there was they wanted a computing environment that was always available and always global. And in 2005, 2006, Amazon came into the market with their own service called AWS. And they, they kind of started this trend of building an infrastructure that was pay as you go, so developers loved it, and it was always available, so you could write really mission critical applications, even Uber and Pinterest and all these guys run on these computing platforms, and they were ridiculously cheap, so they continued to drive the cost down. And that's what made you know, developers jump onto this platform. There are over a million developers already writing, on, writing to this computing environment, and that number is just going to grow. Um, you know, we have, we have tried this movie, we have seen this movie before, play, uh, you know, in, in 99. That time they were called ISP and MSPs and ASPs. That didn't end well, but this time it looks like it's for real. And, and you, you would have seen the, you know, Amazon announced their results recently. The, the numbers are astounding. The financial results are just absolutely astounding. And given that, you can now see you know, Google and, Am uh, and Microsoft and IBM and everybody trying to play catch up. This is, the reason is because there's, there's a pot of gold. There's this $500 billion economy that's about to shift to this new computing environment. And what are these guys doing? You know, whether it's Amazon or Google or Microsoft or all the way on the right hand side, it's Alibaba in China building their own cloud computing platform called uh, Aliyun. These guys are all trying to build platforms. And the reason they build platforms is they want developers to get locked into their platform. It's the same thing that happened in the 80s and 90s with the mini computer era. When, when cost, or, cost got dislocated, the value proposition was, come to me, I'll give you a completely integrated stack so that you could start building on the stack. And the same, the same game is being played right now by Amazon and the rest of the guys who want to give you a complete stack, not just storage and compute, but also security and uh, developer tools and uh, DevOps tools and uh, databases and everything else. They want to give you that entire stack. And I think that's the, the risk in this model, you know, is what happens when you start building applications in the cloud and what happens when you get popular? What happens when Uber becomes Uber, or Pinterest becomes Pinterest, or the next startup company becomes a big company. You get locked into this platform. This is the reason why in the 80s and 90s, people tried to break this thing up and didn't, and, and they, you know, they went to a data center agnostic or a server agnostic play. And we think, as VCs, the same thing is going to happen again. This is what happened to the in the, in the 80s, this is what happened in the mini computer industry. You know, you had companies like IBM and HP and Digital who had built that entire stack, and each layer of that stack, whether it was networking, storage, security, system monitoring, databases, or, or dev tools, that thing, fell up, that thing came apart. Because developers and engineers wanted 
didn't want to didn't want to get locked in to either IBM or DEC. We believe the same phenomena is about to happen. You know, people, you know, getting locked into Google or getting locked into Amazon or getting locked into Microsoft will the cost of moving those platforms, once you build a technology and that technology becomes popular, is so expensive that it's, you know, it, it becomes impossible to move. So I think the next, you know, this, this journey took 20 years. Each layer of this stack is worth tens of billions, sometimes hundreds of billions of dollars of value. Like if you just take the database piece, you know, Oracle is a 140, 150 billion dollar market cap company. If you take each of these layers, it's like hundreds of billions of dollars of value. Those got created by startups like you guys, you know. Oracle was not, was a startup just 20, 25 years ago, or Symantec was just a startup. VMware was a startup less than 20 years ago. Today it has a market cap of 60 plus billion dollars because they kind of fed into this need for making sure that developers don't get locked in to a server environment. We think, we, we, we as VCs, you know, we wonder whether this is going to happen again. This movie is going to get played out again. Will this empty chart, you know, you now have Amazon, Microsoft, and Google on the left-hand side giving you completely integrated stacks. Will the stack be bro broken wide open again? And as VCs, that's the bet we make. You know, the bet we are making is that this entire thing is going to get blown up, and version 2.0 of the cloud is going to be made up of people like, you know, big data companies or system monitoring companies that, re that remain independent and can provide a cloud ag agnostic environment. A which, which, you know, which brings me to the topic of discussion. The reason why, you know, the, 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 the race is who is going to become the data processing platform in the cloud. You can see from that chart that you know, the, we are moving from a transaction era where we are doing transaction processing to a, an era of interaction processing. We are, we are measuring, everything, measuring and analyzing every interaction that happens, whether it's on a, on, on a phone or whether it's, it's a device from your car that's telling you where you are or whether it's a sensor in the Internet of Things ecosystem that's, that's throwing up uh, information. I think that amount of data that's coming into these servers is something that the world hasn't seen. It's just incredible, and that rate is going to continue to climb. You know, this is not, this, we are still early. This is just going to continue to escalate. And we think that you know, the cloud is the only place to build applications that can process this kind of data. There is no way you can try and run these things behind the firewall. Not even the government can do this. You know, this is just, the scale is just too massive for people to, uh, for individual companies to manage. So it's, it's quite certain that if you want to write huge analytical apps, you'll be writing them in the cloud. There's no, there's no I don't think that's, a, that's, that's in doubt anymore. I think the question is, as developers, what data platform are you going to use? Are you going to use um, the Hadoop version that has been given by uh, Amazon or Google? You know, it's definitely not going to be Oracle because the Oracle data structures were built for a transaction processing environment, so it's definitely not going to be that. So it's going to be something new, and most probably it's going to be Hadoop or NoSQL or something more fancy that can process and compute and analyze this information. So here are the three choices. Choice number one is go to Amazon, use that fully integrated stack. Advantages are plentiful. You know, it's fully integrated. It works with Amazon. It is uh, hopefully cheap. The disadvantage, the disadvantage is you get locked in. You're done. You are, once you build these large scale applications, you cannot move them. The sec, or it's going to be very expensive for you to move them. The second choice is um, do it yourself. Take something from Cloudera or take something from Hortonworks and try and forklift it into a cloud environment and use the cloud just for compute and storage 
and try to run this yourself. Not going to happen. You know, we think that the guys who have been able to do it yourself are the big guys, like Facebook and Twitter and Google, and, and Google who had the ability and the money to hire the world's best engineers to solve this problem for them. Most companies are not that lucky. They are not that rich. So by the time this thing becomes mainstream, by the time you know, ordinary enterprises and ordinary developers start writing these applications, doing it yourself is not going to be an option. So the third option is, is there, a, is there an opportunity to build an oracle for the cloud? What is the promise that Oracle made? They made two promises to developers. They said, we'll give you the cheapest and fastest database on any computing platform. And the second promise was, we'll make it portable. So if you write it on our platform, we don't care whether you run it on IBM or Sun or HP or DEC or whatever else. We, we don't, that's agnostic to us. I think a similar promise is being made by younger companies today. Like there are two of, two of that I mentioned. One of them is mine. Uh, it's my investment, that's why I'm pitching it so hard, but there are a few more in that space that have a similar thesis. They are, they're making the same, promise, the same two promises. One will be the cheapest and the best and the fastest database in the cloud. And two, that we'll make it cloud agnostic. So you'll be able to run it from, move it from Amazon, your applications from Amazon to Google to something else, or even take it behind your firewall completely seamlessly. So your investment that you made in building your applications doesn't get wasted. So that's, I think that's our investment thesis. This is just an example of what's going to happen with, uh, with the cloud. Um, data is just one of the layers. For the entrepreneurs in this room, there's a $500 billion market waiting to be harvested. I don't know how many of you all are entrepreneurs, but my pitch was to get as many entrepreneurs psyched about this as possible. But this, that's the market opportunity. And I'm a VC with $400 million in my pocket, ready to invest. So if there are any entrepreneurs in the room, come on in. Thanks, guys.